while traveling through this world of sorrow. I'm on my way. seated. I couldn't help, but no more than I know now. <laughs> Speaking of knowing more, here's a man who knows more than anybody here, Mr. Ron. Say what? <laughs> Say what? I missed what he said. Probably better that way. Probably was. Do we have any first time visitors with us here this morning? If we, if we do, would you take a moment, hold your hand up, and allow a couple of these gentlemen with a visitor packet to get to you. They have a little package that tells you a little bit about our church. Any first-time visitors? I guess we have none. Well, all of you that are regulars, we welcome you today, and we want to make you feel welcome. By way of announcements today... Uh, as we mentioned last week, most of you know that Glenn Graves, uh, most of us knew him as Googie, passed away, and uh, we're going to have a funeral service here this Saturday, August the 14th. 
A viewing will be at 10 o'clock from 10 to 11, the service from 11 to 12. There will be a dinner afterwards, but it will be after the graveside, which they're figuring will be take from noon till about 1.30 when everybody would get back here. Reason we mentioned that is uh, we would like all who can and all who will or are willing to do so to bring a dish for the meal afterwards, okay? And just bring it to the modular, the fellowship building next door, and it will be open at 9 o'clock. So anywhere from 9 to about 1 would be a great time to bring a meal if you would do so, okay? But this Saturday... And all the details really haven't been worked out. All that is subject to change. I think uh, Pastor Arlen's supposed to meet with the families about 3 o'clock this afternoon to polish everything up. But anyway, that's where it stands right now, right? Okay. And uh, another announcement. We are having water baptism today. And it's open for anyone. Doing it does not mean that you're joining this church. Doing it just means you're being obedient to what Christ has said. In the Bible, all throughout the book of Acts, people would get saved, and they'd take them out, and they'd baptize them. And it's an important thing to have it done. And if you are here today, or if you signed up on the sheet, uh, your baptismal certificate will be, actually, it's right there now. So, uh, be before you leave today, you can get it. If you signed up, if you're here and you didn't sign up, you'll have to wait about a week till next week for my wife to get one made out for you, okay? And uh, one more announcement. We want to thank everyone that came out yesterday and uh, helped with the trimming of the plants and planting the new plants and all that good stuff. And we could have never done it. I could have never done it without you. All I'm good for anymore is an equipment operator, and I'm not that great at that either. But uh, we got it done, and all of you that came out, some of you guys, it, it amazes me how some of these fellows around here that are a little bit older than I am work so hard. I could never keep up with them. But anyway, we want to thank you, and we really appreciate all that you've done to help beautify the church today. You know, the Bible talks about a man named Abraham. The Bible said that he sojourned in this land like a pilgrim and a stranger, looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. And I'm always amazed how that John in the book of Revelation on the Isle of Patmos gets a revelation from God. And John sees this city. And he says, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned and garnished, a city of gold. I like this song. It talks about a place where there's no more death, no sorrow, no pain. Thank you, Look forward to that day. There's a city that looks for the valley of death and its glory has never been told where the lamb is alive in the midst of the night in that beautiful city of gold where city today listen to this there will be 
no more sorrow, pain, sickness, or death. Out about that. How I long for that city where there never comes a night. In that beautiful city of gold, where the sun never sets and the death, no sorrow, no pain, man. It's a great day. Great and glorious day. The blessed hope of the church, the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give your attention at this time to Brother Rick Curtis. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's good to see all these beautiful faces. I'm going to sing a song I've been singing for a while at this church, and after practicing it this morning, it, we may retire it after this day. <laughs> We're going to sing it. It's got a wonderful message, and I know Lately, the Lord has really been speaking to me and convicting me of what kind of, and I heard from a really good preacher say, what kind of fruit are we leaving behind, you know? Talks about being in the vine, being with Jesus and bearing much fruit. So I know I'm being convicted there. I hope the song blesses you. I don't have, know if it has anything to do with that, but we got to get in the word. We got to get on the word. <laughs>
Pastor Arlen's going to come up and sing a song. Amen. We'd like to do a little song. It's kind of about water baptism. And it's called the water grave. And if you've ever thought about it before, but that's what baptism is all about. Being buried with Christ underneath that water and be risen to the newness of life. Amen? Amen. Some have asked, her, where's your baptism shirt? You used to wear your cowboy shirt when you did baptisms. <clears throat> well, <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating a little more than I used to. <clears throat> and I can't call it my cowboy shirt anymore. I have to call it my pig shirt. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to change shirts Aww. for baptism today or I couldn't get the buttons buttoned. Amen? But this song is called The Water Grave. In my house there's been a mercy killing. The man I used to be has been crucified. The death of this man is to find a way of revealing. In the spiritual way to live, I had to die. If I let this dead man linger in me I might get a little idle in my way Going down to the Celebration River Gonna take this dead man down to a water grave
dead in Christ, but alive Amen. to the world. Amen? Amen? Give your attention now to Brother Rick Curtis. You know, my first name is Curtis. Didn't know if y'all knew that or not. And his last name is Curtis. So we have Curtis Curtis. Well, good morning once again. You know, I was thinking about when I got up here and sang that song. I get, I'm excited in the Lord. I tell you, he's, he's relit the fire in my heart. And I do. I, I get up here, and I, there's a bunch of things. I'm listening to Bible study CDs. I'm reading the Bible and stuff like that. And there's just a thousand things I want to say. And I feel like, man, well, you've been sitting on your duff all this time. You've got to get out and preach the word and share the word with people. So yeah, I get excited. Just stay with me if you can. <laughs> We're going to stand up and praise and worship the Lord. If you could do the same, do so. If you can't, sit right there and do it. With a shout of glory, with a shout of might, hey! With a shout of glory, pierce the night. With a shout of glory, with a shout of might, hey! Children stand and fight. Let's get glory. Glory to God. Give glory to the Lamb of God. Give glory to the King. Glory to God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Give glory to the King. Jesus. Jesus, 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 with a shout of glory, with a shout of might, hey, with a shout of glory, pierce the night, with a shout of Child of mine, hey! Children stand and fly. Give glory to the, give glory to the Lamb of God, give glory to the King, give glory to the, glory to the Lamb of God, give glory to the King. Jesus, 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 shout it through the city, shout it through the streets, hey, shout it till the victory is made complete, shout his name in glory, give glory to the king, hey, children stand and sing. Jesus, 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 with a shout of glory, with a shout of might, hey, with a shout of glory, pierce the night, with a shout of glory, with a shout of might, hey, children stand, Let's keep singing, give glory to the Glory to the Lamb of God, give glory to the King. Glory to God, glory to the Lamb of God, give glory to last time. Jesus, 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 
to call his name. It is you, Lord, who came to save the 
heart and soul of every It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness. You give me strength with thine own Oh, Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Sing that first verse again. It is you, Lord, who came to save the heart and soul of every man. It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness. You give me strength with thine own hand. Oh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Listen to these words. Lead me, O oh Lord, from temptation, purify me. From within, fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. Take away all my sin. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Let's sing it again. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving. No greater charge. I'll be, I'll be a living sanctuary. sanctuary. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord. Your beauty. Your face is all I see.
that once burned bright and clear. Every church moment is special. As many times as these doors are open, Father God, we should want to be here. We should want to seek your face. That's no judgment, Father God, but it should be the desire in our heart. You, please light that fire, Father God. If there's somebody here today that's on the fence and they're thinking about a relationship with you or a growing relationship with you, let them not stop. Let them seek your face more and more every day. Let them be a light in the world. Let them share their story and testimony. You never know what we could say that would glorify your kingdom. Father God, we give you the credit and glory for everything that will happen here today. Bless and anoint this entire service. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Well, things will be a little different today. As we mentioned, or Brother Ronnie, that we were going to have a water baptism. You may be here wondering, how are you going to do that? Well, this stage does come up, and there is a tank here that we'll be able to immerse people in. But things are going to be different, and several of you have already asked for prayer today. So before we baptize, we're going to pray first, okay? So I get all wet. It gets cold when you get out of there. This air conditioning, so we're going to take care of some of that after I have a little message here today. Uh, Brother Billy Cooper was supposed to be here today. He's the um, young man that we support there at the University of South Florida, their college ministry where they minister to the uh, young people on the college campuses. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a mission field right there. Many brain, many brain has been washed on these college campuses so it's good to have to know that there's people out there that are bringing the gospel to these campuses and he was going to share a little bit it's been a year a little over a year because last year was COVID wasn't able to come or anything but this year he was looking forward to it called me at about nine o'clock this morning said he wasn't feeling well and did not want to take any chances of bringing anything to you guys amen amen but since the last time you saw him you met his wife Lacey 
Well, they've had a baby since. Amen. So next week, they're going to try to make it back, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to share with you about what's going on at the University of South Florida with a cornerstone ministry up there, taking the Word of God to where the kids are at. Amen? Amen. I'm reminded of what Churchill said one time. He said, if you're 30 years old or younger and you're not a liberal, it's because you have no heart. If you're 30 years and older and you're not a conservative, it's because you have no brain. <laughs> so there's supposed to be a change somewhere. <laughs> Amen. So we know all colleges aren't bad. All professors aren't bad. But there's been, there has absolutely been an attempt to brainwash our kids. And it's been very successful in a lot of areas. So we need to pray for all these people that are taking Jesus Christ to the college campuses. And hopefully next week he'll be able to explain exactly what they're doing. And you'll get to meet Lacey again and their new baby. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, today we're going to be baptizing. But just before we do, people have asked me, why do you baptize? Seems like a lot of work. And sometimes it is. Brother Ronnie had to work on this baptistry. It wouldn't drain. And he went through a lot of stuff this week. But, you know, it's worth it to us because... We're going to find out the scripture tells us we should baptize people. Amen. But people have asked me, why do you baptize? And just before I begin, uh, my wife has some critique last Wednesday for me. And uh, she said, can I criticize you a little bit for your message Wednesday night? And I said, well, of course you can. So that's what preachers' wives do. <laughs> But she made mention to me that sometimes I will say a scripture, and then while people are turning to it, I start reading it before they get to it, and they kind of get lost. So she said, you reckon maybe, you know, you could slow down a little bit and allow them to get to their page, you know. And I remember a pastor friend of mine, his wife used to help him out. Now, he was one of these kind of preachers that was long-winded. You ever, you ever known a long-winded preacher? And he knew he had a, a situation, so she would kind of sit in the front row, and then when it was getting kind of time for him, she would give him a little hand gesture. So one day he was preaching, he said, I just got started. She said, Burp. He said, I looked at her, no way, uh-oh, what did I do? <laughs> My battery just go dead? Technology. Oh, it's on. We lost something. You like that? Did that help? I know all about this stuff. <laughs> Anyhow, he felt like he had just started, and she's down there with this hand gesture. He said, so I just ignored her. Finally, I look, she's still doing it. Zip it up. It was his fly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to listen to my wife. I'm not going to ignore. Uh-oh, we lost her again. We got a problem here. Here. Just do the old-fashioned way. Getting off to a good start here. <laughs> Amen. Something's wrong somewhere else. <laughs> Testing one, two, five. <laughs> I don't know. The I guess the amps aren't working, Bill, or something. Testing one, two, three. I think some popped back there. <laughs> Amen. We'll go with this. Praise the Lord. Last week we couldn't get our video to work. This week we can't get our audio to work. But thank God, I think we may be in getting going here. The book of Matthew, chapter 3. 
I'd like to share a few verses with you about water baptism, as a matter of fact. Matthew 3, beginning in verse 13. John the Baptist is out in the wilderness baptizing people. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his message, and people were coming by the multitudes, and they were being baptized in the River Jordan by John the Baptist. We know that he was the one that was to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight his paths. And that's exactly what John was doing. Well, Jesus walks up to John, verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? you got to picture this. John said, wait a minute. It seems like we've got this backwards. I need you to baptize me, Jesus. And here you have come. Uh-oh. Oh, loud. Can y'all hear that? All right, here we go. Check two. Check. Check two. One, two. Mic check. Mic check. Check, check. Check one, two. Check. Mic check. Check two. Two, 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 two. Why do you baptize, Pastor Mark? Well, the first reason is because Jesus was baptized. Amen. You don't think that's significant? That Christ was baptized? Hello. <laughs> we'll try it again. Don't you think Jesus was... Oh, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> The Bible tells us that we should walk in the steps of Christ. He is our example. So if it was good enough for Jesus, and I know that's not the way you should say it, but if Jesus saw the necessity of being baptized in water, maybe we should also. Something at least to think about. It was important to Jesus Christ. We know he never sinned. It wasn't because he was a sinner, but he knew it was something to fulfill all righteousness. And then he commands his disciples to go and do likewise. Look at Mark chapter 16. And I will give you time to turn. Truth is, so I can find it. I didn't mark it. (laughs) Mark chapter 16. Here we go. Jesus Christ himself speaking after his resurrection, he says this to his disciples. He, well, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel 
to every creature. That's the great commission. Jesus Christ told his disciples, you go into all the earth and you preach to every creature. Matthew says, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The same instant, just written by a different writer here. Verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, that's some strong words from Jesus. He's not saying that not getting baptized will damn you, but not believing that he is the Messiah. He is the Son of God, putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, being born again. That's why Jesus told a religious man, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You must be born of the Spirit. Well, how do we become born of the Spirit? You confess your sins. You ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart and to be your Savior. And now it's the work that he has done on Calvary that brings salvation and forgiveness of sin. Nothing you've done. It's all the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. We baptize because Jesus commanded us to do so. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Look at Acts chapter 2. A very familiar scripture to most. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. I'm waiting, Penny. (laughs) Now I know who it was that was having a hard time. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Acts 2.38. Let's go to 37 first to get our context. Let's go to verse 36. (laughs) Therefore, are we there? All right. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Can you imagine? Saying, Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus is Lord in Christ, and you crucified him. Wow. That's quite a weighty thing to be placed upon you. Verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They realized, and they were pricked in their heart. The Holy Spirit convicted them. And they said, man, what do we got to do? We're guilty of having Christ crucified. What can we do to ever undo this? What can we do? Notice what he says. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. So that pertains to us today. Amen. Amen? Amen. We should still baptize. It didn't stop with the apostles. It didn't stop with the early church. To as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Even John's disciples had already been baptized by John, okay? They came to the River Jordan. They realized they needed to turn their heart to God. Repent, that's what that means, to turn from your wife and turn to God, turn away from a a life of works or bad things and turn to God. They'd done that, and they were baptized by the apostle John. But in Acts chapter 19, notice this. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now we're going to find out that these disciples are disciples of John. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. He said, we're, we're disciples of John. John baptized us in the wilderness. And now this is some time later, the Apostle Paul comes through Ephesus and finds these certain disciples and finds out that they're disciples of John. 
Well, what do we do now then? Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Now, don't y'all remember when John kept telling y'all, I'm not the one. There's one coming after me. He's the one. And Paul is saying, remember the one that, they, that John kept saying was coming? Well, it's Jesus Christ. He's here. He's come. He's died. He's been risen from the dead. And when they heard this, verse 5, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized under John. Now they're baptized under Jesus. And that means they were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? Amen. There's some people that all they'll baptize is in the name of Jesus. That's the same thing. If you said Jesus, you said it all. Amen. So we find out that even those who've been baptized under John still felt a need to be baptized. Okay, Pastor Arlen, I understand the Bible says Jesus was baptized. Jesus said we should get baptized. The early church went about baptizing people. But why, why do you immerse them? Why do you put them under the water? Well, you know the word baptize, it means to immerse, to overwhelm, to fully wet. A few years ago, we had a vacation Bible school here. Actually, the very first vacation Bible school we ever had, and the theme was water. It was Jesus, the river of life. And all through that vacation Bible school, the kids, all the things they did were associated with water and everything. So in the very end of vacation Bible school, we decided to have a big water party. We had those blow-up things with water running down. The kids could slide down the slides. We had water guns. We were shooting everybody with water guns. I mean, everything was seen, water balloons, you name it. We even had a dunk tank. tank. You ever been to the county fair or the state fair and seen Bozo the Clown in the dunk tank? I think they brought that dunk tank in there hoping to get Pastor Ronnie in there. <laughs> but I don't believe they ever did. But when you would hit that little lever and that person would fall down, I mean, they were immersed. They don't call it the sprinkle tank. <laughs> and how much fun would that be? I mean, to hit it and all of a sudden, psh. There's a difference between immersion and just sprinkling. I'm not knocking people who are sprinkled. That's not my, but I want you to know why we go through the trouble, if you want to say it that way. I don't believe it that way, but you know what I'm saying. Go through all this to immerse people fully, get them wet underneath the water. I mean, the, even their last hair goes under. Why? Why? Amen. Because of the significance of water baptism. So I'm going to say, well, you can't prove that Jesus went completely under the water. The Bible says that when Jesus was baptized, when he come up straight way out, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. That word straight mean, way means immediately. When Jesus come up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, signifying that he was the one. And that's how John found out for sure that he was the one. Because John said, I won't even know until I see that. Then I'll know that he is the one. Straightway, Jesus came up out of the water. But probably the most significant reason that it identifies us with Jesus, with his death, burial, and resurrection. And especially in the early church, if you see someone going to get baptized, you knew that they were a Christian. There was no doubt that was a Christian thing. You knew they were identifying with this man that they were going around telling everybody that he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. They crucified him on a cross. He gave his life. He shed his blood. They put him in a tomb. But let me tell you, on the third day, he rose. Amen? Yes. On the third day, he came out of that grave. Yes. Amen. So water baptism identifies us with Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. If you don't believe me, look at the book of Romans, chapter 6. This is the Apostle Paul speaking on this subject in verse 3. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? 
We sang the song earlier about the water grave. Amen? The water grave. Well, that seemed like such a strange song. But when you understand water baptism, it makes perfect sense. And that's what Romans chapter 6, verse 3 is. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him, how? By baptism. Into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, how were we planted in the likeness of his death? In baptism. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And when you put someone under that grave, that's symbolic of being buried with Christ. Because your old life is gone. You've, you've died to self. You've given your heart to Jesus Christ. He's your Lord and he's your Savior. The old person has died. The old man. But then a new man comes up. In the likeness of Christ. A brand new life. Now being led by the Holy Spirit. Not by the lust of the flesh. Very, very significant water baptism. So that's why we baptize here at this church. I'm not going to go into the depths of it all. We, there's a lot more scriptures I can share, but we got a lot of things going on today, and we want to baptize these folks. Now, last week, we had a technical difficulty. You can imagine that. <laughs> Amen. I had spoke to you about the Good Samaritan or the Samaritan's Purse and Healing Our Heroes. Remember that? We were going to show you a video of that so you could understand what this was about. So I want to show that to you right now just to give you an idea of what I was talking about. If you weren't here last week, uh, it probably won't make as much sense to you. But we're going to, get, we're going to give to this ministry because during the week I've had people get a hold of me and say, Yes, Brother Pastor Arlen, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. People have already donated to this. Now, if I could get the lights, please. Here we go. When you get married to a soldier, especially when you're young, you really don't know what you're getting into. There's a honeymoon period, you know, and then it's... the bomb explodes. A lot of times veterans get married young in life. One of them goes off to combat and comes back very different. That's hard for sometimes a spouse to understand. You've got the warrior, but behind the warrior is a family. And so we think it's really important uh, that we try to support the military family. The goal of Operation Heal Our Patriots is to revitalize marriages through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know that he is the one that can bring lasting change and hope and renewal. He is the heal in Operation Heal Our Patriots. And it's all of us uniting around these men and women and saying, we love you. We support you. Um, we've been there. Operation Hillary Patriots is committed to these veterans for life. We have reunions, we do Fortify Your Marriage retreats, and it just starts right here in Alaska. It's really pretty, as long as we don't fall. It's amazing how God brought all these couples here and how we are so similar in the struggles and going, okay, so we're not alone. As I was learning, what PTSD is, what, why am I different, why am I having nightmares, why am I reacting this way? She's also now learning the same thing, and it kind of helps us come together. I did two uh, deployments to Iraq. I had just turned 21 years old, and I deployed on, on a Saturday. So when I got back, I met my wife. We got married in December of that same year before I deployed again. He wasn't diagnosed with PTSD till after he got out of the military. Just like every other soldier, there's 
There's wounds you can't see. Everybody has problems, every marriage has problems, um, but it could be something so small, and for him it's amplified, you know, maybe 10 times, 100 times, depending on the day. She would tell me about getting help, and, and I would always say, we don't, we don't need that, we don't, like, I'm fine, no, no. And uh, deep down, I, we weren't fine. I was emotionally done. When we first got here, you just felt safe. It's it welcome. You felt yes. loved. You felt wanted. I felt special. He was talking about issues that he doesn't talk to anybody about. It, that's where it started. There was things that we were actually able to work through issues that we've had for years. And it's out of this place of forgiveness that we can then forgive. We miss our daughter so much. I miss her every single day, but this was the best thing we could have done. This was the best thing we could have done for us and for her, because she's gonna have parents that have learned how to help each other, how to communicate, communicate with each other. She's gonna get back better parents than what we were when we left. I resolved to build my life. I resolved to build my life. And our family anew. And our family anew. On a firm foundation of faith. On a firm foundation of faith. Edgar, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> this is a step we needed to take together. And, and we gave our heart to Christ and we're getting baptized. We're, we're doing it. Both ready. <laughs> yes, yeah. we're both we're ready. ready. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Clarity is like this, raising a new life. <laughs> we baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Clarity is like this, created new in Christ. <laughs> 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 I know his heart, I know his heart, and we just needed this, we needed God to, you know, just kind of maybe dust it off. <laughs> you know, dust it off and just say, this is the person you fell in love with 16 years ago. You know, this is still the person that puts you first. This is still the person that chooses you. Um, and it's still the person that I choose. Amen. Amen. I mentioned last week one of the reasons that we have chosen this ministry. They have so much more assets than we could ever think of. And I found lately it's better to team up with someone that can do a whole lot more than what we can do on our own. There's no way we could ever even come close to doing anything like this. But we can help some people go through it. And like I said, we've been given a generous donation to the church. And at this point, we're, we're putting $10,000 up front. And we're believing the church will match that. Not just one person, but together. Okay? And already people are giving to it. Amen? But our goal is $20,000 to this ministry to see how many couples that we can bless. You know, in this church, let me just share real quick before we get to baptizing. When we began this church, we did not want money to be a dominant theme of this church. We wanted to preach the Sermon on the Mount, not the Sermon on the Amount. And we had been through that. We'd seen that and seen how it turned off so many people. And as I studied the Bible, I found out that God asked for 10% of our money but he asked for 100% of our heart. You do the math. What is God more concerned about? The hearts of men and women. Did they get right with him before it's eternally too late? So 
We made it a goal as the elders of this church to try to get out of debt as soon as we could. And six years ago, we burnt the mortgage to this place. All paid off. And to God be the glory. Some question that. Said, well, maybe we should be doing this or maybe we should be doing helping this one. I said, well, we're going to take care of that. So then we will be able to help. God brought us here to start this church. We know the church will continue one day without us. And it'll be left in a position where they can do more than we ever dreamt of doing. Because whoever enters into it won't have a debt hanging over them. Do you understand that? So we're in a position, we're in a good position, church. This area is growing like crazy. People are moving to Florida and Hillsborough County faster than you can almost think. You know, a high tide floats all boats. Just that fact, we know that things are going to grow. But I just thank God that things can grow without this burden of debt. And we'll be able to do more things like this to help more people. Because that's what the church really is all about. Reaching out to the world. Touching the lost. Touching those who are hurting. Wounded soldiers. Talking about Christian. Wounded Christians that need to be touched from time to time. So we're honored to be involved in this. Through the weeks we'll start giving you more information. Uh, we won't be able to start signing up applications until next February because of the window. But hopefully we'll have some people either from here or somebody we know. You can put in an application. doesn't mean you'll be picked because it's limited. But whoever it is, thank God they'll be ministered to. And like he said, it's not just a one-time thing. They commit to these people for the rest of their lives. They stay in touch with them. They have reunions. It's not just a one-time shot in the arm. It's something they're involved with for the rest of their life. Amen. So you be praying about it. If you'd like to give to that, we'll be setting things up, making it very easy to do so. Now, it was brought to my attention this week that we have someone in our midst that would like to ask Jesus into her heart. And she's going to come forward at this time, and we're going to pray with her. Sister Ruth Ann's going to bring her. Amen. Praise God. 88 years young. So I'm coming down there. I'm going to come down there. The Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice. Amen. Amen. Now, I know I may embarrass this guy. I don't mean to. Brad, I know you want to pray. Everything's a little different today. Would you come up, brother? This is a gentleman that I went to high school with. I met him in the seventh grade. And he may not even remember, but we had all seven periods together. And I was the old bashful boy. And he kind of took me under his arm and uh, 
Made me feel a little better about being in high school, being so bashful. He didn't even know he was doing that. And so I've known Brad, gosh, 50-something years. Because this year was our 50th reunion. So we met in the seventh grade. So you do the math. <laughs> <laughs> but Brad's been battling with cancer, lung cancer. He had it several years ago, and it's come back. And he wants prayer. So he doesn't want a big deal, but he wants prayer. And I want you all to see who he is. So when you pray, you know who you're praying for. So Brad, you may get mad at me, brother, but I won't embarrass you. Well, if those of you who are going to be baptized, some of you probably came prepared to, as you are. Some maybe you need to change. If you need to change, this would be a good time to do it. If you've already changed, you can come forward. We're going to start taking this floor up. Those that are going to be doing that, come forward, please. So give us just a few moments to prepare for them to be baptized. And Brother Rick asked me if he could help me today, so I'm going to let him help me. He's a lot stronger than Ronnie anyhow. way and you Rick's gonna catch you now okay and help you you need to hold your nose some people do oh yeah okay <laughs> let me know <laughs> <laughs> Vivian we come to baptize you as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost are you ready
Ah, yeah. Take your time. We're not in no hurry. I knew a Gene Simmons one time. He played in a rock and roll band. That wasn't you, was it? <laughs> Gene, we come here. We're going to baptize you to be a disciple of Jesus. We baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You need to hold your nose? Ready. Okay, you ready. You're kind of a tall fella here. <laughs> now John told me he was baptized when he was a baby. Yep. He just felt like he needed to do it again. Amen? Yep. To be immersed. So we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Look at that. Christy. And Morgan. You want to go first, Morgan? Yeah, I'll let Morgan. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing how everybody wants everybody else to go first. Oh, it's warm. Oh, my goodness. That's when you get out. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Amen. It's been a long time since I baptized a rest hall. Yeah. Amen. Right. So it was my honor to baptize you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Rick will catch you. Okay, Morgan, she did it. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. And this is Morgan. She's like a daughter. You're seeing Buddy, right? Yes. I am. Amen. She wants to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. She wants to follow him in baptism. So we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Amen. Anyone else? A lot of times somebody gets inspired. Amen. Amen. Water feels good. Yes. Just when you get out. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's thank God for those who followed him in baptism today. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. And I'd like to ask for you to please stand. Everybody to stand up. Let's sing the old anthem of the church. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to see God's praise than when we've 
he first begun. Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God for His amazing grace. Father, we do thank you from the bottom of our heart, Lord God. The prayer for salvation that was prayed, the mercy, the grace that was poured out for those who have decided to follow you and Order of baptism. Lord, I pray this will be a day that they'll never forget. We just thank you, Lord, that we had a part to play in these people's lives. We don't deserve it, but God, we know you're worthy. And because of that, you've made us worthy to perform the things that you've asked man to do. God, we give you all the glory and the honor. And as we leave this building today, we pray for your blessings upon each person that was here, that you would keep them safe as they travel home. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you for being here today. Please be careful going home. See you later. Bye-bye.